Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing okay. I'm just going to make a quick um, prepper haul, prepper pantry edition video. And I wanted to come on real quick and just urge anybody who has just heard about prepping and building a prepper pantry to please, please heed the warning, start your prepper pantry. Um, don't let these videos just come and go. Um, I hope they make an impression on you. The reason why a lot of us are doing this, well, there are many, um, my personal reasons are, what if I was told tomorrow or next week or January 10th that I am not allowed to work anymore to support my family, to pay the bills, to bring home the bacon, to bring home the food? What if I was told you're not allowed to work anymore? Well, I don't exactly have a backup career in mind, uh, so... The reason I prep is so that if something were to happen all of a sudden that I had no control over, at least my family wouldn't go hungry. The last thing you want to see is a hungry child and your, your child coming up to you saying, Mommy, I'm hungry. I already have a 12 year old who says he's hungry all the time anyway. I don't want it to be because he's actually hungry. So that's why I prep. Um, you never know what's around the corner, how the economy is going to change, how the environment is going to change. And so having a, a prepper pantry is basically like your food insurance. I used that term a long time ago and a lot of people do use that term. It's insurance um, for your stomach, I guess. Um, you will know that if something happens, that's one thing you don't have to worry about. You do have food in the house. And if you're new to prepping, a good way to start is the basics. The cheap, easy to get basics. Pasta, rice, beans. And those things store almost indefinitely. And then get yourself some pasta sauces, some canned vegetables, some canned soups, canned fruits. Things that are going to store for a very long time without you having to worry about it. And just start there. Each week when you do your grocery shopping or however often you do it, grab a couple extra things that you know you're going to put back and set aside just in case. And make sure it's things that you like, obviously. Um, I think that variety is the spice of life, so my prepper pantry is very diverse. There's all sorts of things. Um, but basically, I just want to urge everybody, please, please start. The world is changing. The world is crazy and... We don't know what's uh, what the future holds, and to have food in your house is just one method of security. And I, I hope that nobody has to go hungry. I hope that everybody is prepared and doesn't wait until the last minute when it might be too late. So hopefully you heed this warning and start your prepper pantry today. It doesn't. You don't have to call it a prepper pantry. Just call it food that you're putting back for an emergency. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you some stuff that I just got. I always yeah, um, do these hauls with you guys because I, I, I don't know, I think it helps out. It helps me to stay encouraged to keep prepping. Um, I think one thing that happens a lot is we get complacent or that it can happen from time to time. You think, okay, everything's fine. And then some big event or some new thing comes out and you're like, oh, I should really, I really need to be prepping hard right now. And then it kind of blows over and goes to the wayside and everything seems like it's fine again. And you're like, okay, everything's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, something else comes out of the blue and smacks you upside the head. And you think, oh man, I, I shouldn't have slowed down on my prepping. Um, I do that from time to time. I mean, I, I haven't really stopped, but I'll, I'll kind of slow down the intensity of my prepping. Um, but don't let complacency slow you down. Keep on prepping. Keep it up. Don't stop. Anyway, I'll go ahead and show you my haul now and stop talking. So I didn't get like a huge amount of food or anything, but these are just some extra things that I'm putting back. And to the left here, I do have some sweets. I have some cake and icing. And I always tell people, make sure not to um, forget the sweets. Because in a bad situation, you'll need those as a pick-me-up. And hopefully your electricity is still on so you can bake a cake. But it'll just cheer people up. Especially if you're eating beans and rice for a long time. And at the Dollar Tree I got some more of the milk. This is becoming very hard to come by. I rarely see it in the Dollar Tree anymore. 
Um, but it's it's great shelf stable milk has uh, almost one year shelf life. I have drank it past one the one year Best Buy date, and it was totally fine. Um, up here, I did get some Augustine Farms chopped onions because it was on sale for like eight or ten dollars. I think it was like ten dollars, and that's a whole lot of chopped onions. Um, don't forget your seasoning, your spices, your herbs, and all that kind of stuff that's going to make your canned goods and your prepper foods taste better. Um, I love flavor. I love spices, and I, I do have a lot of those stocked up, and I think people should. I got 24 cans of the chicken noodle O's that my son loves. I grab these um, as much as I can whenever I possibly can because they are always running out, and my son just loves those. You all should know that by now. <laughs> We got two more cans of the seasoned cabbage, and then these oddball ones, um, I used those for something I can't remember. I think I made curry, like chicken curry or something, and I used the um, whole potatoes and carrots, so I'm just replacing what I used out of the pantry. A couple more things of yams, some tomato sauce, one random thing of chickpeas, and um, these Creole red beans. Just put that over some rice and it's delicious. Then I got some green chilies, some tomato paste. All of this is um, mostly for my chili. Um, two more cans of the roast beef and some enchilada sauce. So that's all for the canned goods. And then I kind of went crazy on my gravies. I got six more brown gravies, two more chicken gravies. And I like gravies um, because it, it'll make just about anything plain in a can taste good. Like this roast beef, throw this in a pan, heat it up, put some brown gravy on it. Delicious. I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, put some, some brown gravy on your stuffing. Put it on your rice, um, mashed potatoes. It basically just gives flavor to just about anything. Got a couple things of these real bacon bits. These are going to go in the freezer. Um, I use them a lot for salads and... Um, in like eggs and stuff, but I'm gonna put these in the freezer just so I have some extra put up and I already showed you this but here's some more stuffing. This goes a long way and it's a good filler. You can mix all sorts of things with it. You can mix meats and vegetables and kind of just make like a big giant casserole out of it. Um, some more mayonnaise. I was just running low on that and then the lovely wonderful Top Ramen. I actually um, took one of these things of Top Ramen yesterday um, boiled it in water, strained it out, and fried it in a pan and made some chow mein out of it. And my son loves chow mein. He didn't even know that it was made of top ramen um, until I told him. And he was like, what? It, it tastes better than Panda Express. So you can make some good things out of this top ramen. And I guess that's about it. But yeah, guys, I just want to encourage you to keep on putting stuff back. You do not want to be left without... And have your family whining and complaining because they're hungry. You don't know if um, maybe coming up soon the grocery stores will be short-staffed. Or the um, companies that package these foods will be short-staffed. And there will be shortages. I don't know. You, you just don't know. And it's better to have the safety net of having the stuff in your house than to go without. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Actually, I'll see you tonight for the 12 Days of Christmas Prepper Series.